Everybody, welcome back to the podcast. My name is Justin Boudreaux, and I'm so excited that you guys are here with me this week. This week, I'm going over the second part to Romans chapter 8. I planned on finishing off last week, but this verse stuck out to me so closely that I feel like I have to share on it because it is so just just revolutionary. So I'm going to hop right into the text. Romans 8, you can pick up your Bible. We are in verse Romans 8, verse 31. It says, What thou shall we say to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son, but gave up for us all, how will he not also with him graciously give us all things? Who shall bring any charge against God's elect? It is God who justifies. And this is what I want to get to right here. Verse 34 says, Who is to condemn? Christ Jesus is the one who died, and more than that, who is the one who was raised, and who is at the right hand of God right now, and who is indeed interceding for us. What sticks out to me in verse 34 is, is that Jesus is praying for us. Jesus Christ, the one who came down on earth, the part of the triune God that came down on earth and made himself among us is now sitting in heaven at the right hand of the Father and he's praying for you and he's praying for me. What a promise that is. How how incredible is that? That God of the universe, the God who created us, the God who sent his son Jesus, Jesus Christ is sitting on the throne and he's thinking about me and he's thinking about you. If you take it a step further, right before this, Paul talks about in Romans 8 after verse 28, he talks about how we are predestined, how we are foreknown. So the very God, Jesus Christ, is sitting on the throne praying for us and that very God, hey, it was he was thinking about us and praying for us since the foundations of the earth Jesus Jesus is praying for us last week we talked about how the holy spirit prays through us and in us right Jesus's earthly ministry he came down on earth so that the great comforter the advocate can live on the inside of us that's the holy spirit the same power that rose Christ from the dead now lives on the inside of you so we talked about in Romans 8 26 7 and 8 how the holy spirit prays through us with words that cannot be uttered by man right so we have a heavenly language that gives us direct connection to pray what the will of God is for our lives so What's so interesting now is if you go a few verses later, now Paul goes on to say, not only does the Holy Spirit pray through you, but now Jesus, the son prays for you as well. Two out of the three persons of the God Trinity are praying for you. Wow. That's incredible. How can, how can anything go not God's way? How can we fail? How can we fail when we put God first as we pray to him, as we submit ourselves to him, and as he prays for us, as he has thought of us since the the foundations of the earth, right? But it gets a little deeper than that because Jesus, his prayers for us, the, the intercessory that he's doing for us at the right hand of the father, he, he's not a disconnected being from reality, Right? Because he's been here. He's been on earth. He has gone through. He has seen. He has been in the firsthand experience of what we're going through, right? You can think of a a boss or a CEO. Think of somebody like Steve Jobs or uh, Tim Cook now. Think about how disconnected they are from the the person who's at the bottom of the totem pole, the janitor at Apple headquarters, They don't know the day-to-day struggle that he's going through. Yet, there was a better promise in the Bible because Jesus is not a CEO. Jesus is the King of kings and the Lord of lords. And he made himself a man amongst men so that he could die on the cross so that we could have a restored relationship with him. What a promise that is. How exciting is that? So we see that get broken down in Hebrews 4. Hebrews 4 is going to give us a better understanding of what Jesus' role is as the one who's, who's praying for us as he sits on the throne next to the Father. So Hebrews 4, verse 14 says, 
Since then we have a great high priest who has passed through the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God. Let us hold fast to our confession, for we do not have a high priest who is unable to excuse me, <laughs> sympathize with our weakness, but one who in every respect has been tempted as we are, yet without sin. Let us then with confidence draw near to the throne of grace, that we, we, that we may receive mercy and find grace and help in a time of need. Jesus is now the great high priest. We don't submit ourselves to the priestly structure no more. In the Old Testament, the Levites were separated as priests to what? Execute the law. And that no priest could live up fully to the law because they were all fully human. But there's better news. In the New Testament, the New Covenant, Jesus has now replaced the priesthood. He is now the great high priest in the order of Melchizedek. He is now the one who is and was and is to come, right? He, there is an eternal God who came down and made himself amongst us. So he can sympathize with my weakness, with what I go through. But there's better news than that. Jesus Christ was blameless. He was perfect without fault. One time I heard a pastor say, and I don't think he fully meant to say it. It actually wasn't a pastor. It was a guest speaker, but he said it in a church setting. And he said, oh, nobody's perfect. Not even Jesus. And the whole entire crowd was taken back at it because clearly that's blasphemy. We don't believe that at all. Jesus Christ was perfect without blemish. The lamb who was brought to slaughter and it kept his mouth shut. Isaiah 53, right? So you understand that Jesus is fully God and fully human. And he came down to make himself among us. And he died for us. And only the blood of Jesus could take away my sins because he was spotless without fault. But he cares about you so much and he loves you so much that he would come down, face the same temptations of this world has to offer, yet come out on the other side victorious. That's the God that you serve in Jesus Christ, the one who cares about you. You know, John 3.16 may be so cliche to a, to a Christian, but it's so powerful. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever should believe in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. Have eternal life, that Jesus that came down. What a promise that is. I have one more verse I want to talk about, and that's going to be found in John 17. I'm going to talk from verses 20 through 22. I'm actually going to read it in the, uh, the, the Passion Translation. So it says, And I ask you, not only for these disciples, but also for all those who will one day believe in me through their message. I pray for them. This is Jesus speaking. I pray for them all to be joined together as one, as even you and I, Father, are joined together as one. I pray for them to become one with us so that the world will recognize that you sent me for the very glory that you have given me. I have given them so that they can be joined together as one and experience the same unity that we enjoy. Jesus is praying for you at the right hand of the Father right now. The Holy Spirit, as we dove in last week, is praying through you as he lives on the inside of you, right? So what Jesus is saying here, when he says that we want, I pray for them to be joined together as one, even though as you and I are one, Father, this is an invitation into that Trinity, right? He's inviting you in, until the to the completion or the unity of the Trinity, right? The the triune God, God the Father, God the Son, Jesus Christ, and God the Holy Spirit, all one God, are all complete in their love. They are complete. They don't need anything outside of that. They are one, and one is enough, right? They created mankind. God created mankind to join into that fellowship. But through mankind's wickedness and sin and what Adam did in the Garden of Eden, we got disconnected. But thank God that Jesus came down 
and he died on the cross so we can have a restored relationship with him. And thank God that we can now join into that unity and to that completion of love. And God is inviting us into that as Jesus is praying for you right now, as the Holy Spirit's praying through you right now, there's a dance going on right now between the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, and they are welcoming you in. So when you wake up in the morning, you can make a decision. Do I want to join in with what the, the God wants me to do in this world, or, or do I want to live for my own self, right? You have an invitation as you pray in, a, in tongues, as you pray in your natural language, as you read your Bible, as you go to church. These things aren't for just the benefit of man. These things are that you can have a relationship with the living God who created you, who foreknew you, who had a plan and a destiny for you before the foundations of this world. He loves you. He has a plan for your life. He wants to use you today. And all he's asking is, is that you join in. You join in to what's already happening, what their love is already complete. And he's inviting you into that as Jesus is praying for you. What a promise that is. How can you fail? How, how can you not make it? How, how can there not be just excitement in your life? How can there not be fruit in your life of how good God is and what he wants to do? This is what the end of Romans 8 says. No, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am sure that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor power nor heights, nor death, nor anything else in all of creation will be able to separate us from the love of God and Jesus Christ, our Lord. Nothing can separate you from that love. When Jesus thought of you before the foundations of the earth, you cannot be separated from that. Take that as a promise that no, I don't want to be disobedient to that. I want to press into that. I want to abide in the Father. I want to, just as John 15 talks about, abide in me as I abide in you, that whatever you ask in my name, you shall receive. This is so that you can bring much fruit and much glory to the Son and to the Father. Wow. You can't fail. You can't fail because Jesus is praying for you and the Holy Spirit's praying through you. All you have to do is yield into that and see what God's plans are for your life, and see that the promises of God are yes and amen, and that he wants the best for you. Jesus loves you. He's got something in store for you. If you don't know that, today's your day to understand it. If you're, if you're listening to this today, and you don't fully understand what, what the price that Jesus paid for you, my friends, it's simple. All have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. The wages of that are death. That's what we deserve. That, that's where my free will got me. It, it brings me to a place of death, right? But there's good news. There's a free gift of God and eternal life through his son, Jesus Christ. And all we have to do is believe in our hearts and confess with our mouths that Jesus Christ is our Lord and Savior. When you do that, you're going to experience eternity, not only in the future, but now. You're going to experience a new eternal perspective on your life because now the Holy Spirit's going to come to live on the inside of you. When you're ready to do that, go see the video that I just pinned in the, the comments below. It says, do you know where you're going when you die? It's Justin and Victoria Boudreaux. Are you going to heaven when you die? Is actually the name of the video. And you can be led into a prayer of salvation. That's the beginning place of your life that God will invite you in to what he's already doing. The complete unity of the triune God loves you and he wants to have a relationship with you. And Jesus is praying for you right now as we speak. Praise God. What a blessing. What a gift. Guys, I hope this was an encouragement to you guys. If you like this video, be sure to hit the like button, subscribe for more. Until next week, we will see you guys. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out.